In the Galapagos Islands, you can observe many seabirds during the breeding season, often at close range. One sees all phases of the reproductive process, from initial courtship behavior to young birds leaving the nest. The breeding behavior of Galapagos seabirds has many variations. In species such as the waved albatross, a male and female engage in stylized courtship rituals. Male frigate birds gather in a group called the lek and put on sexual displays for prospective mates. A female frigate bird who enters the display area then selects the male with whom she wants to breed. With Nazca boobies, a male and female will build a nest together to strengthen their pair bond. Some seabird species compensate for the short duration of their copulatory acts by copulating frequently. Copulation in birds, while necessary for producing young, tends to be very brief, but what you are seeing now is clearly an exception. This male swallowtail gull jumped on a female's back and stayed there for more than three minutes. Birds have a hole toward the back part of their underside called a cloaca, through which reproductive and excretory functions occur, although not at the same time. For males, it is where sperm and excrement come out. For females, it is where sperm goes in and eggs and excrement come out. The word cloaca comes from a Latin word that means sewer. For a male to pass his sperm to an as yet shellless egg of a female, the two birds must press their little sewers together in what is called the cloacal kiss. A few types of birds have a penis, some of which are quite extraordinary. The male lake duck of South America has the largest reproductive organ of any vertebrate. It can reach the length of the bird itself, which is about 17 inches. However, the males of most bird species have only a small bulge called the cloacal protuberance to help them put the sperm where it needs to go. The female stores the sperm for a period as short as a week or as long as more than three months, depending on the species. She uses the sperm to fertilize the eggs as they come out of her ovaries. The shell develops around the fertilized egg and she lays it so that she will not be weighed down by developing young which is very important for birds who fly. The only way you are likely to see a cloacal protuberance on a live male bird is if you have him in your hand and blow on his underside. Bird banders use this technique to determine the sex of birds. The mechanics of bird mating are neither easy nor comfortable. Birds cannot lie on their back, which means that two birds whose reproductive holes point downward must twist them around until they meet. This usually is accomplished with the male standing on the female's back. Because of the awkwardness of the position, most bird copulations are brief. What you are seeing now is very atypical. Here is a swallowtail gull chick, and this footage will be much shorter than the copulation. Waved albatrosses do a courtship dance that starts out all kissy face. They do a lot of bill fencing and pointing their bills skyward. Courtship dance tends to be longer and more involved in newly formed pairs or in pairs who were unsuccessful in breeding the previous year. The dance involves a lot of stylized movements and bowing and some scratching. It also involves the birds sauntering and sashaying. Sometimes more than two birds will be involved in the proceedings.
Male frigate birds have a large red throat pouch, which they inflate while doing sexual displays. They gather in groups and try to attract females by spreading their wings and proudly displaying the pouch. Here is a male with a female. You can see him rubbing his throat pouch on her. Galapagos penguins are the rarest penguin species in the world and the second smallest. They mate for life. With this breeding pair, the male defecates and then moves behind the female, who is slightly smaller. Meanwhile, their friend in front looks forlorn and with head hung low, trudges away. All three of the penguins shake their head at some point. Nazca boobies are common on some of the Galapagos Islands. This pair is engaging in mutual grooming, which strengthens the pair bond. The Nazca name comes from one of the tectonic plates on which the Galapagos Islands rest. Nest building is an important part of their mating ritual. The nest is very simple, consisting of a small circle of stones and vegetation. The actions of these boobies are very slow and methodical. The lethargic male brings a small stone over. When he lays it down, he mounts his mate. Neither one shows much enthusiasm. They look as if they are simply going through the motions. Nazca boobies sometimes lay a second egg, but the extra egg is only for insurance in case the first egg does not hatch. You can see two eggs in the nest. This Nazca booby has a chick. If a second egg hatches, the younger chick will be pushed out of the nest area by the older chick and will perish. Frigate bird chicks are born naked and will grow a coat of white down after about two months. Young frigate birds will leave the nest five or six months after hatching, but will sometimes be dependent for food more than a year later. The female frigate bird takes care of her offspring longer than any other bird species in the world. The adult male stays around for only half of the long period of care that his offspring require from conception to independence. The care during the second half is left to the female while he goes off to find another mate. Under this system, the males breed every year while the females breed every other year. Early on, Young frigate birds have a long hooked bill. Here are some chicks being fed by adults. The chicks will stick their long bills pretty far down the adults' throats to get the food.
waved albatross chicks are covered with curly brown downy feathers. For the first few weeks after hatching, one parent guards the chick while the other forages for food. Whatever food is captured by the parents is held in the stomach where it is converted to an oily liquid. Upon returning to the colony, the parent finds its offspring and then pumps the liquid into its stomach. As much as four pounds of liquid can be forced into the chick's stomach at one feeding. Note the hood mockingbirds pecking near the chick. These albatrosses lay only one egg. They do not build a nest, but lay their egg on the ground. This second chick was probably adopted after being born to a different bird. During incubation, the parents frequently roll the egg about, covering distances as much as 40 meters. The reason for this behavior is unclear, but it seems to be correlated with a higher success in hatching. This footage was shot on the Galapagos Island of Española, which has about 12,000 pairs of waved albatrosses. When the chicks fledge, they leave Española with their parents and head for the Western Pacific Ocean. The parents return the following year, but the fledglings remain away for five to six years before returning to Española to breed for the first time. Young blue-footed boobies do not have blue feet. When a youngster wants food, it lets its parents know. Even though they cannot yet fly, young birds begin to exercise their flight muscles at an early age. Gradually, the white down is replaced by the brown feathers worn in juvenile plumage. When they have molted into juvenile plumage, they continue to exercise their flight muscles, and they continue to beg for food. Here is a newly born red-footed booby chick who is begging for food from its mother. It does so by pecking at her bill, which stimulates her to regurgitate food. You can see that this youngster's aim is sometimes not very accurate when it tries to hit the mother's bill. The chick will soon grow and look like this. If all goes well, it will molt into adult plumage and raise a family of its own, continuing the remarkable cycle of life in the Galapagos. William Young is the author of The Fascination of Birds from the Albatross to the Yellowthroat, published by Dover.